everyone. This is Casey Hogan, and welcome to this week's edition of To The Point, an inside look at Tarleton Athletics, as we want to welcome in one of the newest members of the Tarleton men's basketball team, 6'7 forward from Orkuta, Russia. Played one year at Freed Hardeman, Konstantin Dodsinko, and I know that you go by KD. So, KD, welcome. How's it been going? It's been good. Thank you. Looks like uh, looks like you had a pretty uh, physical practice today, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every practice is physical here, you know. So. Hey, when you're, when, I guess when you're getting ready to play Texas A&M and Gonzaga and Kansas, uh, yeah. you, you got to be physical to get ready for those games, right? Yeah. So before we talk uh, basketball, let's talk a little bit about your background. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to try to say it right, but you're from Vorkuta, Russia. I hope that's close. I Googled it. It's 5,533 miles from where you're at right now in Stephenville, Texas. Yeah. Uh, describe what it was like uh, – Growing up in Vorkuta, Russia. So I only spent there my first five years. It was right now the city is dying right now because it was like a big city in Soviet Union. And then because the people were going there to, uh, there was some a lot of coal mines. And uh-huh. my father was like a miner. So he went there to get some money because the miners were getting paid good in uh, Soviet Union. And then, uh, the mines just start closing out and people just start leaving this town. And right now I think it's like less than 10,000 people lives there. And this is one of the dying cities in Russia. And I moved, moved out from there to Moscow when I was like five with my family, my mom and dad. And I was living in Moscow for the last uh, 13 or 14 years, 14 years. Yeah. So, so Moscow, obviously one of the largest cities in the world. Uh, that was probably a little bit of a, a difference moving to, to Moscow, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of diff- I mean, I can't remember much from that age, but yeah. Yeah, I love Moscow because I love big city life, you know, like just uh living in a big city, uh being able to talk to a lot of people and meet new people every day. I love this. What's the biggest difference from uh living in Russia and the United States? What are the biggest differences? Probably people. People are different. Yeah, I would say uh the mentalities are different and uh, the way everybody communicate with each other are different so yeah this is what this this is the thing i have to adjust my like first year i was just trying to adjust to american mentality and trying to better understand people now your english is better than mine probably uh <laughs> how old were you when you learned to speak english uh we learned in english in russia since fourth grade so I think I was like, I was 11 years old when I started learning English. But before I came to the United States, I was barely speaking. And uh, I, I can't understand everything, but my English wasn't good to like communicate with everybody. And I guess I picked it up real quick in like three or four months because there was no uh, Russians around me. So I had no choice. I was just, I had to talk to people. And yeah, I think in like six months i was pretty good in my english i was able to talk with everybody about anything so you always hear when you learn a second language really to learn it you have to be like thrown into that culture like you were talking about so fair to say that fair to say that until you moved to arizona florida that's when you really started to pick it up yeah yeah i think i really started picking it up just up when i moved to california when so firstly i went to arizona the school wasn't really good over there, and I transferred from there like November or December. And I went to a good school with a lot of good, good guys. I'm talking, I made some friends, we've been hanging out a lot. And uh, yeah, they were all Americans, I had no choice. I was big talking English every time. So um, yeah, this is where I think my English got really better at that time. You, you talked about being in Arizona and California, and then you finished. Uh high school, your final year in Jacksonville, Florida at Potter's House uh, Christian Academy. Uh, what was it like to be in Florida? What was that experience like? I like it a lot. Florida is a pretty good place. It's warm over there. And it's always sunny. And it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Probably one of the best high schools I've been to is Potter's House Christian Academy. Uh, we, were, we were getting food at least because <laughs> – not going to lie, in Arizona and California, <laughs> not getting food at all. So it wasn't, it wasn't really good. I lost like, I lost like 10 or 12 pounds my first year here. Yeah. In Arizona? 
Yeah, in Arizona and California, both. Of them. Maybe I need to move there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, before we go on to uh, your freshman year of college, you talked about it being warm in Florida. I was reading your bio. Where you're from in Russia, it says on the your bio can get as cold as negative forty degrees. Now, I'm a Texan, and you're gonna find out around here in the winter that like thirty degrees is cold here. Yeah. How, how do you even survive or go outside when it's negative forty? So the weather over there is like drier, so there's not a lot of oxygen, and like negative forty feels more like negative eighteen. I mean, it's still cold. It's still cold. yeah, sure. People people are walking around, and I remember. I remember, like, just have a walk with my friends, and uh, and it was like negative forty, negative thirty, and nobody like really cares. You just have to. We were wearing these hats, you know, the Russian has the most popular one. Like everybody, <laughs> this is like the only place in the world where you can actually see this hat is probably the city I'm from. Nobody right now wearing this hats, but over there, yeah, they still wear this because you you will get cold and you can't even get sick. Like, uh, like some brain sickness or something because like, you know, it's, it's so cold. Frostbite, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey uh, you talked about the, the heat in Florida. If you were to go on vacation, would you prefer being in the mountains or would you rather be at the beach? I would say the beach. Yeah. I love when it's warm. I hate cold, honestly. Even though I'm from such a cold place, I hate being in cold, so. <laughs> well, you came to a good place in, uh, in Stephenville. And before we talk about Tarleton, let's uh, talk a little bit about um, where you played NAI ball last year after you left Jacksonville, Florida. You go and play your freshman year at Freed Hardeman in mm -hmm. Henderson, Tennessee. You averaged 18 points a game, had a lot of success, uh, the conference freshman of the year. How were you able to make such an impact and jump, jump in and average 18 points a game as a freshman? Yeah, even my coach said that he did not expect me to play that good. I mean, he knew that I'll be a good fit and I can do the immediate impact of my first year, but he did not expect me to be the like actually the leader of the team and the second best scorer in the conference. I mean, he just let me play my game, I guess, for the first time in the United States. This is how I end up, I think, in the NIA because in high school's coaches don't really like really want me to play my game and basically my game he just let me shoot everything and I just start hitting like I start believing my shot and yes I hit like 100 threes and it was like 43 percent so I think this is uh all praise to the coaches and teammates just because they believe in me and they just uh, they they were they were really me to give me the ball and and just let me play, play my game yeah, you talked about that. That actually was my next question. 43% from the arc, 98 threes last season, four threes a game. That'd be fourth in the nation at any level of NCAA or NAI. Have you always been comfortable shooting the deep ball? Yeah, yeah. I've been always a shooter on probably like the whole career, but not many coaches really want me to shoot like eight, nine threes per game. I mean, because some, some coaches are saying it's like, not good for other teammates, but the coaching for your arm and he, uh, the, game, the game was built around three point shooting. So I think it's just, it was just, a, I was just a good fit for the team because we were, we were hitting like, I can't remember what we end up with, but the first half of the year, we were making 17 threes per game, which was like probably like the most, or I can't remember, but it, it, it was a lot. So. Yeah, but I was always comfortable with shooting the threes. This is what I was doing all my life. So walk us through the decision to uh, to leave Freed Hardeman and, and come here to Tarleton. What was the big factor there? I mean, I just want to compete at the highest level I can. And uh, so I have uh, some options. The first, there is a D2 school start reaching me out. Then I talked to some coaches in high school in Florida, and they started talking to the DB1 coaches. And... Uh, I started getting offers from the DB1 schools, and uh, I knew that I wanted to play in a higher level. And I always, I always, I mean, it was my dream coming to the United States and be able to play against the best college players in the world. So it was as soon as the DB1 schools started reaching out to me, it was, uh, I wasn't even uh, thinking about, uh, I mean, I was thinking about staying there for one more year, but mm -hmm. I would, uh, I would definitely be upset if I stay there.
because I, I just want to play at the highest level I can. Well, you're about to uh, really play at the highest level because yeah. I have a lot of respect for NAI basketball, just being around the game. There's some great players at that level, but you're going from that level to Reed Arena uh, on Wednesday against Texas yeah. A&M and then the number one team in the nation, Gonzaga, in a couple of weeks. So uh, I, I know it's about to be a big step up for you. And talking about Tarleton, I know campus is different right now because of COVID-19, right? It's been It's been different, but – How's it been like here at Tarleton? Have you enjoyed it so far? Oh, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. And, uh, and school is big. And as I said, I'm from the big city and all over. And, like, you know, there's a lot of people around you and you, know, you can communicate with many people. But, yeah, it's just, I mean, everything about the school, I like it here. And uh, the campus are pretty. The, the studying process, I like it as well. And, yeah, I enjoy it here. What's your favorite food that you've eaten in America so far? Uh, it's hard to say, but I like Chipotle a lot. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, I like Chipotle a lot. So Mexican food, huh? It's good? Yeah, Mexican food, yeah, I would say. Because can, we, you, can you even find Mexican food in Russia? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can. Mexican food is not really popular in Russia, so I do, yeah. have, I do have, like, American restaurants with burgers and all that stuff. I guess in Moscow, there's probably any kind of food you could dream of, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a lot of like international restaurants. But, yeah, have you yeah. got hmm? Have you gotten any cowboy boots yet since you moved to Texas? Have you been oh, too yeah, snapping? Sent to my dad. My dad wore them. Oh, you sent you sent them to your dad? Yeah. All yeah, right. He wants he wants a cowboy hat, but. <laughs> well, we can uh we can definitely hook you up. You know, some good places uh here in town for that. So, yeah. hey, Constantine, I appreciate the time. Uh, thanks for joining us on To the Point. Look forward to calling the game on Wednesday night at Texas A&M. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you so much. That is Constantine Dodsinko, this edition of To The Point. Make sure you follow Tarleton Athletics by searching at Tarleton Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date on Tarleton Athletics. So long, everyone. It's time to make joy, America, and we're here to help with the Ford Built for the Holidays sales event. Get 1,000 trade assist cash on top of what your eligible trade is worth, plus 90 days payment deferment on a new Ford F-150 or Ranger. Ford, built for the holidays.